Hello friends, in case this is the first video you're watching, welcome to my channel. In case you are a um, big time fan, welcome back to my channel. In this video we're going to be taking a look at the autosomal DNA predicted phenotyping traits of an Anglo-Saxon individual. Uh, what's interesting about this Anglo-Saxon individual is that his Y DNA is actually I1, which is most typical in Scandinavia. So his Y DNA is I1A, uh, that is Scandinavian lineage, contrary to the typical modern English R1B, which is predominant in modern English people. So he's got Scandinavian patrilineal lineage. His uh, maternal haplogroup mtDNA is, let me see, it's U5. Wait, no, no, it's H1. I'm not really sure where H1 is most common. Uh, you can look it up. I, I'm not going to. We're gonna go ahead and get right into his actual traits, what he looked like, that type of stuff, what he, what illnesses he had. Uh, this type of thing is what this video mainly will be about. Let's start with Nashakot calculator results. So he's got, it looks like, blue eyes and a very low likelihood of any color other than blue. Definitely very low likelihood of brown eye color. It looks like he has got dark blonde hair and light or fair skin shade. And this is his predicted eye color with my uh, web version of Nashakot. We're actually going to go ahead and compare this with the executable version of Nashakot. And we're going to talk about these results and their implications in a little bit. Wait a second. Uh, okay, I figured out how to do this. So this is the predicted eye color with the web, with the executable, excuse me, version of Nashakot. You can compare that with what's um, displayed by the web version. There is a difference in the way these images are generated. For example, with the web version, I have a couple of pre, uh, predetermined images, right? There is like, let me close this cord. There is like um, 10 or I don't really remember how many there are to be honest, but there's, there's a couple of images and depending on what you score, uh, as your result, one of them is displayed. When it comes to the executable version of Nashakot, every image is actually unique. Uh, the you know the colors, the hues are determined by your results, but every image is unique. So there is there is really you know two different eye colors will be uh, shown differently. Whereas with with the web version, there's going to be a bunch of people who score the same exact thing. That's basically the difference here. So we're going to go ahead and look at his actual genotypes. Uh, he does not have East Asian EZAR, no EZAR, no East Asian EZAR. He seems to be heterozygous for blue eye haplotype 3, and he does have blue eye haplotype 1 and 2. Okay, uh, so kind of similar genotype to me. Actually, actually, never mind, not a similar genotype to me because... Uh, he has two draft variants here, I only have one. So uh, this individual seems to be a little bit even lighter than me in terms of his genotype in the Oka 2 and Herc 2 region. He has BH1 and 2, he does not have, well he's heterozygous for BH3, and he does not have blue eye haplotype 4. Alright, when it comes to skin color, he seems to have the um, European light skin variant in SLC 45A2. Yep, definitely very light in skin, I think with the Nashakot a skin color prediction, yes, it's going to be light or fair skin uh, because of that primarily, but there's a couple other things that contribute to the result. Uh, when it comes to this, yes, he also has this variation as in SLC 2045, uh, Eurasian pale skin, and he also has some pale skin variants in ASIP. So overall, uh, this is a pretty light color guy, light color hair, light color skin, light color eyes. Uh, you know, if you just look at the numbers, it's blue eyes, dark blonde hair, and lighter fair skin. He might have looked something like Jesse Pinkman from Breaking Bad. Uh, and um, he also appeared on Better Call Saul. So this might be kind of the look that this Anglo-Saxon individual had. Uh, I, you know, I could pull up, I could pull up like an AI generated image or I could pull up um, some kind of drawing. But I think it's going to be better if I use real people for examples of a certain phenotype. Right, now we're going to go ahead and look at his Oka2 and Herc2 eye color results. It's pretty much the same thing, but just for eyes and just in the Oka2 and Herc2 region. So nothing outside of the Oka2 and Herc2 region is factored into this result. Here, once again, looks like he's got blue eyes. Uh, we're going to look at his... Well, I um, the ethnic calculator stuff, it may be, it may be good to see. 
Um, but you're not going to see anything interesting here because it's only 350 SNPs and this is not a particularly accurate result. Um, in terms of like GD match and Admixture Studio and like G25, this individual is just basically a typical English person. Uh, we're going to look at his polygenic risk scores. So he's got, it looks like, slightly above average score for schizophrenia, uh, slightly above average score for type 2 diabetes, and slightly, actually, uh, pretty significantly above average score for Alzheimer's. So we're going to check his monogenic traits and we're going to find out why that is. Uh, his heterozygous and comets valve met variation, so he has one val, one vet, one met allele for uh, warrior versus warrior. He's got a warrior genotype in MAOA, so it looks like he's more warrior than warrior. Uh, what that means, probably quicker breakdown of dopamine overall uh, compared to like what's typical for Europeans. Uh, less dopamine in the system and problems with like attention and motivation. However, advantages on stress resiliency. This is what the crux of the warrior versus warrior uh, genotype is. He does not have any no-go learning variants in DRD2 DRD2 Pro for 19 Pro. Interesting. So. Okay, wait, and he's got GG here in DRD2, which leads to a slightly lower risk of schizophrenia and nicotine dependence. So I was getting worried a little bit because I saw this and this and this, and this looks like uh, a very typical, of like a very stereotypical genotype for somebody with various mental health conditions. But uh, I think one of the really important contributors to increased risk of psychosis is the ALE on this variation of DRD2, which he does not have. However, he does not have the ALE on TAC1. Once again, he's got two G alleles in TAC1. Typical genotype for most humans, and overall it's a good thing. I wouldn't say it's a negative genotype to have because it greatly decreases the odds of ADHD, Parkinson's, stuff like that. However, there is a downside, and the downside is that it's greatly increased risk of various mental health conditions, such as psychosis, bipolar, stuff like that. Uh, so the overall, what it is, is slightly higher number of dopamine due to receptor sites, which is not necessarily that bad, you know, it's not a bad thing to have more dopamine due to receptor sites. I'd say it's more bad overall, in terms of life quality, to have less, because, you know, ADHD kind of is a lot more frequent than stuff like schizophrenia. Yeah, ADHD is a lot more frequent, and uh, if there's like 0.4% of people who have schizophrenia, there is like 20-something percent of people who have ADHD. So obviously, ADHD is the bigger issue here for most people. Um, he's got TT here, below average odds of bipolar and schizophrenia, and he does not have long-form 5-HTTLPR. So this individual has got short-form 5-HTTLPR, slightly higher odds of depression, stuff like that, uh, slightly higher odds of problems with serotonin transport. Uh, he has two, so two sociopath variants for reduced OXTR expression and lack of empathy, so he seems to be a little bit more on the sociopathic side. Uh, he is homozygous for the European lactose persistence mutation, so he does not have, he's definitely a lactose persistent, very stereotypical European, um, definitely tol tolerates milk quite well. Um, for diabetes, he does not have type 1 diabetes. Wait, no. He's got AC here. Okay, so he actually has... I know it reads here that it leads to a slight decrease in risk of type 1 diabetes. It's really a slight decrease relative to like the AA genotype. Relative to the average person, it's a pretty significant increase. So he's actually got... Uh, it looks like a increased risk of type 1 diabetes, although my um, polygenic risk score page doesn't really care about type 1 diabetes. It's only about type 2 diabetes. For hemochromatosis, he is not a carrier for the Celtic curse, not a carrier for the hemochromatosis mutations. And for Alzheimer's, well, this is the reason he's got such a high score for Alzheimer's. Uh, primarily the reason he's got heterozygous genotypes here. He does not have the APOE2 alleles in APOE, so he doesn't have the APOE variants for Alzheimer's, which are the most important variants. However, he's got these genotypes right here, which also increase the odds of Alzheimer's. Um, he's got the G allele in this variation, of four, which is kind of crazy because... What's well, not so crazy, but it's just an uncommon genotype to have. Uh, most people have the AA genotype, but in Europeans, the GLO is somewhat prevalent, and you, s you end up seeing some Europeans with the GLO, which actually does greatly reduce the risk of myopia and leads to better eyesight. He does not have micro P, and, well, you can look at all that yourself. He doesn't have any of the familiar Mediterranean fever variants. Um, I'm going to skip all that because I have to make it a 10 minutes mark. Not a carrier of any of the albinism mutations, and he's a mix of muscle types, likely more sprinter than endurance athlete. 
and average brain volume. That's it. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for watching until the end. Leave a like uh, and subscribe if you enjoyed. Goodbye.